welcome and uh, we were uh, discussing about the types of uh, induction motor these are one is called slip ring induction motor or also it is called wound rotor induction motor because real three phase winding distributed are used wound rotor induction motor wound rotor type ok. Uh, stator windings are of course, same in both the types another is cage induction motor and wound rotor induction motor I have told you it will be represented like this three phase winding on the stator, three phase winding on the rotor and these terminals are terminated uh, in some copper rings which will rotate and the fixed brushes are shown by these lines and these are the rotor terminals this is slip ring or wound rotor induction rotor is also wound like a now what is a cage induction motor Achha, before i tell something about cage induction motor another interesting fact i must uh, share with you before i go to the cage induction motor which will be helpful to understand how a cage induction motor works we know by this time that to produce torque in any rotating electrical machines, uh, there should be poles created by stator currents on the stator body, there should be poles created by rotor currents on the rotor body and uh, the number of poles must be same that is very important and uh, relative angle between these two uh, should not be time variant delta should be fixed that we know. Therefore, just as a uh, academic exercise if I say that I have a three phase winding on the stator of any machine three phase winding with say p equal to 4. I create one three phase winding. On the rotor suppose I will say uh, I will make winding the way three phase winding has been made, but suppose I say it is a two phase winding balanced two phase winding. Okay. So, stator has a balanced three phase winding and rotor is balanced two phase winding the phases are different in the winding of stator and rotor. Now, what is a balanced two phase winding? In its simplest form in the rotor if you have four slots and if you place suppose four pole I want to create I will say this is say a rotor A phase, rotor B phase and similarly here uh, no uh, I am sorry what I want to tell to create four poles we know uh, this is one coil 90 degree mechanical is 180 degree electrical. So, this is the starting of say A 1 A 2 of the rotor phase and another coil and this coil can be uh, spread symbolically I am just drawing this is B 1 B 2. So, it is a balanced two phase winding in its, in its simplest form to get the idea balanced two phase winding. How it is uh, if uh, this is A 1 A 2 this is there is another coil called B 1 B 2 and uh, and uh, I am so sorry this is a 1 a 2 and this should be 
a 3 a 4 this is the a phase I am so sorry is that clear two coils are needed a 1 a 2 and a 3 a 4. So, this is a 3 and a 4. Now, if you connect them in series such that uh, you pass current here to understand how many poles it creates. So, we discussed it earlier. So, it is cross dot then once again through a 3 current is entering cross and dot you can easily see uh, there is uh, 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 four poles created because uh, uh, this uh, this will be this way lines of force and this will be this way lines of force and uh, cross dot cross dot hmm? So, this is the uh, oh, I am sorry this will be the lines of force here dot and this cross will have lines of force like this and this dot will have uh, this we know this and four poles are created south north south north etcetera. Similarly, you have another four conductors what is the balance two phase winding it will be marked as B 1, B 2, B 3, B 4 two coils will be necessary and these two coils will be shifted from the F s coil in space by 90 degree electrical which means uh, mechanical angle 45 degree uh, 90 degree electrical and uh, electrical angle is 2 by p by 2 into theta mechanical. So, so if theta mechanical is uh, uh, theta electrical is 90 degree it will be 45 degree. Therefore, you have uh, then uh, I will draw it nicely here this is suppose your f s coil a 1 a 2 a 3 a 4 this is the f s coil and b phase coil start will be 45 degree after this and this I denote it by this. So, here it will be b 1 here it will be b 2 45 degree apart and here it will be B B one B two and here it will be now forty five degree B three and B four. Therefore, same pattern shifted by forty five degree mechanical. For four pole. Is not this will be the pattern. Therefore, A phase and B phase fields will be 90 degree apart. So, it is a balanced two phase winding and such a balanced two phase winding if it is excited from balanced two phase current then also it will produce a rotating magnetic field. See any balanced polyphase winding be it two phase, three phase, six phase excited by balanced polyphase currents of equal number of phases uh, will create a rotating magnetic field. How many poles it will create? Four poles. Stator is a balanced three phase winding, four pole. See if you have an induction motor essentially what I am trying to tell if the rotor is balanced two phase winding like this and uh, uh, if they are 90 degree apart stator field is created. So, it will create balanced two phase voltages if the stator field moves open circuited it will move like this. So, 90 degree apart voltages will be created. 
and if uh, these rotor terminals are shorted, I mean a balanced two phase current will be flowing. Is not balanced two phase current will be flowing, and balanced two phase current if it flows, it too will produce a rotating magnetic field. I leave it as an exercise to you to prove that a balanced two phase winding like this say A 1 A 2, this is A 1, this is A 2, uh, this is A 2 and the axis are and this is A 1 A 2 and this is B 1 B 2 their spatial angle is 90 degree electrical. If it is excited by balanced two phase currents, you assume this current to be I max cosine omega t and this current to be I max cosine omega t minus 90 degree, because balanced two phase voltage I will connect. What is the balance to phase voltage? Phase voltages are equal in magnitude 90 degree apart in time. So, such a voltage if you connect the currents will be like this and these two also create a, a rotating magnetic field. Now, since the condition for producing steady electromagnetic torque never talks about phases, it only tells that the number of poles of the stator and number of poles of the rotor they must be equal and the angle between them at any time should be time invariant. Therefore, one can for academic exercise say that I can uh, develop an induction motor whose stator will be balanced three phase winding because supply is three phase but rotor could be either two phase or six phase multi phase rotor but balanced and known for same number of poles that is important then stator will fail to understand whether on the rotor there is a two phase winding or three phase winding or a six phase winding it cannot distinguish whether uh, it only sees uh, how he reacts to the rotor, because rotor creates a rotating magnetic field of a of same number of poles as that created by the stator currents. That is all is needed to produce uh, steady electromagnetic torque. Therefore, for rotor it a stator it does not matter whether on the rotor there is a balanced two phase winding or six phase winding no. Of course, while constructing a machine we will always see that three phase winding wound rotor induction motor also wound the rotor for three phase winding, because otherwise for a given rating of the machine this winding rating has to be made higher that is the thing only. Therefore, and uh, why unnecessarily make three phase stator, six phase rotor, short it, but the machine will work, no, no problem at all. Okay, this background is necessary to understand the operation of cage induction motor. So, we have learned this that uh, rotor winding could be of any phase. Achha, now, coming to the cage induction motor as I was telling. It is very interesting. See cage induction motor first see the construction. What is done is this, uh, it is like this. This is suppose the rotor, rotor iron, okay? rotor iron and what is done there will be slots in which there will be conducting bars they called bar, bar of the copper and several such bars will be there a number of understood in these slots either aluminum or copper bar and that will run on an 
along the length here. This is one bar, this is another bar like that. I mean, I, no point in continuing with this. Uh, this way, this can be also done. So, several parallel bars, I mean, around this uh, perimeter of the rotor is there. And what is this? This is iron, okay, iron. And there is as such, uh, you do not require to manufacture this rotor a skilled winder you tell okay so many slots are there put just bars and then uh, what uh, they do the, these bars each bar has got its own identity that is you can say coil sides but i am not going to make a coil what i will do is this i will short circuit all these points here that is i will take another copper uh, which are called end rings continuous copper or aluminum ring end rings of appropriate diameter of course, such that this fits into it. So, I will push it here. So, that all the ends of these bars on this side they will be shorted. Similarly, end ring this is called conducting end rings right? conducting copper or this thing. So, these are rotor bars. So, arrangement is like this and here once again take another end ring and push it from this end. So, that all this free end of these bars they are shorted uh, there are several these I have not drawn, but you understand what it is. So, these bars also continue like this I mean uh, and so on. So, all the bars are uh, there are bars here uh, the projections of these all are shorted from both the sides. And now, it looks like a cage if you imagine that this thing without the iron it will be just like a cage squirrel cage they call it and that is why the name cage rotor is here. So, this is the cage rotor. and it can be done like this. And for this what I am telling you do not require a skilled winder. A skilled winder is necessary for the stator winding because he knows okay, for how many poles uh, you are winding then mechanical angle electrical angle if uh, for a given coil if one coil side is put, put in this slot where the return coil side will be in which slot. So, lot of uh, things are to be seen and uh, that is why a skilled winder is necessary, but in cage rotor it is not like that. It is simple ok slots are given you just insert the brushes one after another and take two end rings put it like this and your rotor is ready. And of course, in this type of construction no point in asking for rotor terminals, because everything is shorted this side that side which point to take. So, no rotor terminals, no rotor terminals this is very important unlike a slip ring induction motor where rotor terminals will be available to you to connect something. So, in cage induction motor this is out of question I mean no point uh, to connect external resistance in a cage rotor because I do not know where to connect everything is shorted at both the ends. So, these are the end rings. End rings. Okay. So, this can be also just drawn as a section sectional view like this uh, from the end view of this machine will be just like this then several conductors to I 
I mean some conductors and these are shorted and that shorting is shown by a circle touching all the ends. On the other end also it is like that. Now the question is okay if for this machine stator is first the observation I will tell. Suppose stator has a balanced three phase winding rotor is like this no question of external short circuiting is necessary now it is already shorted and here suppose you give three phase supply balanced three phase supply you will find oh rotor is rotating that is the observation I mean in lab if you just energize you will see it is rotating as a slip ring induction motor will run. Now, the question is why it is doing because how to explain these things it is of course, not a distinct uh, polyphase winding not a two phase three phase oh, what to do. See to understand this what I will be doing is that first imagine so, so the simple way the rotor looks like this this is entering these are the bars is not it goes on the other end Achha, to understand what is going to uh, how, how things are working and suppose I name the bars and uh, the, this ring you imagine it is first taken out then uh, this will be an incomplete uh, end uh, this in entering you imagine I remove it remove it. So, that uh, how these things will look like several conductors equispaced in the in the 360 degree mechanical angle and uh, and the other end I have removed the end conductor. So, these ends will be free with this 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 ring is present and this ring removed end ring is removed removed understood and suppose these are the terminals one the free ends of these conductors one two three four five like that so many will be there and uh, each one is a conductor of equal length, but they are spaced from the other by this angle the, the angle between them is the space uh, angle by which they are separated. Now, in this machine if you imagine the one of the endings is removed other ending is there and therefore, the, the potential of all these points where the end rings I am imagining it is present these will be all of equipotential is not uh, and on this stator I have got this three phase winding and here if I give a three phase supply then I know the consequence of this there will be a stator rotating field created say B s whatever it is and it moves it does not depend upon rotor structure what you are doing you have energized a three phase winding with three phase supply a rotating magnetic field will be produced. But nonetheless this rotating field will move past this conductor which is now stationary because there is no rotor current. So, no question of torque uh, the other ending I have removed then I must say that there will be induced voltage in each of the conductors in this conductor 1 0 in the conductor 2 0 3 0 there will be induced voltage and if I uh, sketch this induced voltages it will be suppose it is it is E 1 0 this voltage 
rotating field is moving like this, then E 2 0 that is B L V this voltage the phasor of this and that will be a time varying voltage because B is sinusoidally distributed and B 2 0 will be here somewhere it will be lagging length will be same like that E 3 0. What is this angle? If you call this angle to be some beta or whatever it is, each voltage will be lagging this voltage by an angle beta. And this way I can come back here some nth conductor this voltage will be here depending upon E and 0 how many slots are there it will be something like. So, everywhere uh, this voltage is there getting the points hopefully. Therefore, if you take a voltmeter connect between across each bar the magnitude of the voltages will be same RMS voltage the LV, but the voltages of the conductors will be displaced in time by some equal angle. Okay. So, over a two pole it will be like this, if it is a four pole machine anyway this will be the feathers. Now, the argument is, so in the rotor circuit I have generated a balanced polyphase voltage. It is no longer a balanced three phase voltage created in a slip ring induction motor rotor R phase, Y phase, V phase not like that, but nonetheless the voltages created in this conductor they become seat of EMF and it looks like it will be like this there is a voltage here, there is a voltage source here there is a voltage source here and the, these voltages are these voltages and so many. So, it is a polyphase balanced voltage which will exist in the rotor. Now, you imagine the second end ring I am now closing that is now equivalent to a normal induction motor operation what we do we short circuit this with the help of a switch and so on. I think you have got the idea you, you short it now with this second end ring you now imagine it is now inserted. Then in the rotor circuit what is happening there is a balanced polyphase voltage how many phases it will be we can easily work out, but nonetheless a balanced polyphase winding the circuit is closed therefore, the currents in the conductor will be balanced polyphase current and if a balanced polyphase current is flowing then the then it will create a rotating magnetic field. Okay. And once that rotating magnetic field is created well stator does not know who created this rotor magnetic field whether a balanced three phase slip ring induction motor or somebody has made a rotor like this everything is shorted here this side that side with end rings and that rotating field is created. If S is the total number of slots in the rotor S is total number of slots then we uh, will discuss in the next class that the number of phases number of phases of of rotor will be how much do you think it will be the number of slots per pole pair and this i will continue next time but this is very interesting development what is the advantage of this kind of motor? It looks like there will be no maintenance necessary because there is no slip ring and brush. 
in fact a rotary is very strong <laughs> and sturdy no no maintenance is at all necessary and this rotor construction can be done i mean mass production of rotor conductors can be done okay that i will also tell you that is some metallurgical process and that is what they do they take a structure like this rotor slots are there you uh, pour these holes are there cylinders like this okay you pour molten metal okay molten copper or aluminum in each slot and uh, so so conductors you allow it to cool and your rotor is ready and only two end rings you make that can be also manufactured in large numbers put one here put another there and your rotor is ready anyway we will continue with this next time thank you